Kevin has always espoused the capacity of big ideas to really affect great changes like the UN development in New York, like proposals for skyscrapers all over the place. Kevin was the first one to really look at buildings in a context bigger than the immediate environment. He looked at regions, he looked at infrastructure, he looked at landscape. And Kevin's ideas are incredible. For example, Oakland Museum is the, one of the first buildings of our time that burrowed into the hill. I finally went to see the Ford Foundation office building and I knew immediately what the big deal was. And then I found myself deliberately walking a path through New York to be able to walk by that atrium space or to experience that building. The Ford Foundation is a prototype of bringing the outside in, creating a natural environment, a world within the world of busy Manhattan. I have found over the years that people always react well to trees and flowers. One of the aspects then of people in buildings is that you never want to get too far away from the outdoors. Kevin has been involved in the expansion of the, of the Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York over several decades. And he's been responsible of expanding the museum in a very thoughtful way. He has worked for the Metropolitan Museum for 40 years. I think one of the biggest collaborations between architect and a client in the, in the history of architecture. I really appreciate his John Deere headquarters. And it's one of the more phenomenal types of buildings. They really suit the function of the particular organization or the company. And it's a very humane space for people to live and operate and work in. He has such a great respect and regard for the folks that use the buildings that I think that this is what really separates him and will continue to do so um, as a great architect, one of the greatest architects of his time. And frankly, I just can't wait to see what he does next. It's interesting to think about Kevin's career in terms of uh, his migration to the United States to work with Mies van der Rohe in Chicago, then to move to Michigan to work with Errol Saarinen. Then eventually Kevin was able to create his own identity as an architect, winning the Pritzker Prize and completing many projects for many important clients around the world. He does things that everybody says, why didn't I think of that? What makes Kevin unique is the human aspect of, of Kevin. Uh, he's very focused on people. He's a very selfless person. It's soul-destroying to sit in an office staring at a computer or shuffling papers and not have a contact with the outside, not have a contact with nature, not have a, a sense of community. When he starts on a project, he conducts extensive research. For example, at Union Carbide, I think they interviewed hundreds of people about their working habits. I think it would be a healthy perspective for architects to hold that they have a public responsibility. We're here to serve the community. We're here to build the environment for the community. We're here to do it in such a way that it enriches people's lives. This is what really makes Kevin so great. I think if somebody commissioned him to design a doghouse, he probably want to get to know the dog, so he did the, the doghouse just right. Um, that's, that's what he does so well. How does an architect communicate his or her design intentions to a client with these gigantic models that he made, photographing them in such amazing ways? And he invented, as far as I can see, what could be called computer graphics before the computer. Kevin Roach believes in many principles that uh, we share uh, as an Asabloy group. Uh, one of them is the deep understanding of a customer's and user's needs. We call it customer intimacy. He is able to think the building through, through its design, through its execution, through all the material testing, the client relationships, the timelines, the budgets, and able to deliver that. Kevin is a superb professional and a very tough-minded person, but he is a charming person. But he can be quite tough, I'm sure. You don't build buildings for the United Nations in, in Mayor Lindsay's city with Governor Rockefeller breathing down the back and not be tough.
the architectures and environment, Kevin doesn't just build a building for its building's sake. He envisions the entire environment and how it gets affected and how it is affecting everything around. I think the idea of architecture as environment also captures something that very much resonates with the contemporary architecture students. The idea that we have to think about the bigger context for buildings. Well, architecture environment to me means uh, architecture in the, in the context of the greater whole. Environment also means that we are designing in a way that's sensitive to the environment and how we create this artificial world within the natural world. You see people walk in and look at and then they say, oh my gosh, I didn't know. You know, that sense of discovery of so much about somebody you thought you knew about, but now you see them in a new and much better light. We should all of us bend our will to create a civilization in which we can live at peace with nature and with each other. To build well is an act of peace.